In Bangla, the language of Bangladesh, the word Projanmo means generation. Started in 2001, a landmark study bearing that name showed how generations of newborn lives might be saved. The project was limited to one area of Salet, a district in northeast Bangladesh, but its lessons apply to communities around the world. This is the story of Projanmo. Silat is graced with lush green rice paddies, tiered tea gardens, and rolling hills that form the border with India. In one of the most densely populated areas on earth, daily life plays itself out between the field and the market and children walk to school or play as their parents work in the paddies or on the rivers. While rich in many resources, it is poor by most standards, including health care. And this poverty hits Celette's youngest, its newborns, the hardest. Here, as in the rest of Bangladesh, 90% of babies are born at home and families often have little or no access to skilled attendants at birth. As a result, maternal and newborn deaths are common. When Pro Johnmo started, 50 babies of every 1,000 died before reaching one month of age. They died from preventable and treatable causes, infections, complications from prematurity, and complications from childbirth. Here, the most dangerous day of a child's life is the day of birth. Mothers generally give birth in the privacy of their own homes with traditional birth attendants called dyes. If a problem comes up, Hospitals are few and far between, and care can be costly. A woman like Zihan may be the key to reducing newborn deaths in places like Silet. She's a community health worker, a central figure in the Projanmo study. She and her fellow workers bring essential health services to mothers and newborns at home. Almost none of them had a background in any kind of health service delivery. Uh, many of them had, had never held a job before, but these were women who were really highly motivated to help their community. Zihan was called to help a mother and newborn daughter by the father of this household. During pre-birth visits, she had told the family to alert her when the baby came and to watch out for danger signs. I noticed then that the baby had feeding problems. I touched the baby and realized that she was very cold. Zihan knew from her training to focus on warmth and nutrition in the critical hours just after birth. She wrapped the baby with a blanket and asked the mother to hold the baby close. She then helped the mother spoon feed breast milk to the baby. Contrast Zihan's case with that of this young mother, who has just given birth to a girl at home with the help of a dye but without the benefit of having been taught the essential practices by a community health worker. Working from traditions that have not changed in hundreds of years, the Dai does her best to care for the baby. But some of the customs run counter to Zihan's focus on essential interventions, such as providing warmth and early exclusive breastfeeding. The baby is separated from her mother for hours and she's often uncovered and the dye feeds the baby honey and cow's milk. Believing the mother's colostrum, the thick yellowish breast milk produced in the first days after birth, is not fit for the infant. <laughs> 